This is Matt Rhodes for Matlock Town TV and I'm joined today by Paul Phillips, the Matlock Town gaffer. Billo, how are you today? Very good, very good. Nice to have a, a Sunday after Saturday football. Yeah, 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 I can imagine. Um, obviously, it was only uh, a friendly, not a competitive game, but I'm um, sure it was still fantastic to be uh, back out on the pitch and uh, doing what you do best. Um, well, normally, uh, first of all, I ask about the, you know, how, how you think the players performed, but I think because of the strangeness of having a friendly in uh, December, um, first of all, just how important was it to have a match of some sort um, on the Saturday before you actually return to competitive action uh, on Tuesday night? Massively important. We had, a, we had, a, had every session, running session Thursday evening at Sheffield. Um, and then obviously went to Worthing Choice there, which I, I thank them for hosting us. Um, and it was, it was massively important that we, don't forget, we, we probably had an, an extra two weeks layoff as well. We're having the COVID input that we did after coming back from South Shields. So we've, we, realistically not played for six weeks rather than the four weeks while we've been in lockdown so it was important like I say again you can train as long as you want but it never gives you that match fitness or that match sharpness which a lot of them showed that they can get back up to speed just today and then yeah obviously in the circumstances that it comes in not not many people actually witnessed the game that took <laughs> place yesterday but um Obviously, a five-nil scoreline suggests a really uh, convincing display. Um, how did you think the players got on yesterday? Like any match, Matthew, we always want to win football games. Any any manager will tell you. Any any player will tell you that. But the biggest thing was today was making sure lads got the, the right amount of minutes going into Tuesday evening. But they they, they played well. It's shown that they'd worked on the fitness throughout, even though. We'd put the Zoom sessions on and the running sessions on that we'd, we'd give them. And it just showed what a special group we've got that we've given them. They've undertaken them. Well, the majority have undertaken them. And it, it actually shown quite a lot yesterday with not just what we did on the ball, but how we how we pressed aggressively off the ball, won the ball back out of the pitch and, and caused a team that's probably going to win their league a lot of problems. And um, just in terms of individual performances, um, obviously it was a shame no fans could have been there, but it was the first time Ross Hanna uh, had uh, a Gladiators shirt on in uh, just under a decade. Um, how did he get on in his first game back for Matt Locke and uh, how well did he link up with uh, Liam Hughes up front? It was brilliant. It was brilliant. His movement, his work rate, his hunger to, to do what we've been crying out for him to do all season, running beyond with him. With, Impetus going beyond people, balls bouncing in the box, getting round him. I think he scored one, he made one. He, he could have scored two, actually. He did score two, but the referee, for some reason, pulled the, the, the foul back. It wasn't a foul, it was, it was an head injury, which at the end of the day, it's a friendly game. But you could see the, the upset on him and the frustration that he scored two and one and took away. And that's, that's what you get when you get a goal score. They do want to score. And I feel like it'd be a, a massive part. And I can't say give me any eye accolade and to say that after the game before the game it looked like he'd been there for 12 months and as long as some of the other lads that's how well he's, he's integrated in such a short space of time and uh, obviously it's been sort of just over a month really since any well about four to five weeks since any sort of football on the pitch how pleased were you with the team that even though they've had the break um, now that they've been back on the pitch They've sort of carried on really from where they left off uh, from that last match against uh, Colville Town, which now seems a long time ago. No, I've never, without, and we've not done anything yet. I'm not going to start waxing Liverpool, but we've got a special group of lads. The lads govern themselves, they manage themselves, they look after themselves, they demand standards of, of each other. Anyone falls below that standard, that's where my job comes in. And to be perfectly honest, it, you could see that yesterday. And it just, it's a pleasure. To, it's a pleasure to be with these lads and see what they ask of each other and what they demand of each other in in different ways. But it's it's a special group. It's a special group. And I think at the moment in time we're at a place where we're being held back a little bit with everything that's going on. As other teams will say the same. But I feel if we get a good run at it and we can keep gathering momentum because people forget that this team's probably only been together 12, 14 weeks, played six competitive games in the league and are probably four or five in the Cups. So we are in the early stages, but when you get a feeling and ask the staff and ask the people involved with the board, 
we've got a very, very good group of lads that are, are special in, in many, many ways. And uh, information was a bit limited in terms of what happened yesterday, so you might have to uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, I understand a couple of players went off, I think it's like a precaution, uh, carried on, uh, uh, picked up a knock. I think Ryan Qualter was one of them. Will they be OK yeah. for the Tuesday night game? Qualter didn't go off with a knock. Qualter came off with, because he'd, he'd, he'd had enough minutes. Um, Sam, Sam wanted to play on, Yates wanted to play on, so we put Lee and Hughes back to to centre half because obviously he's unavailable come Tuesday. So, and also it's another string in our ball. If anything does happen to a centre half, Liam was was outstanding at centre half. Um, Chippy went off as a precaution. He got a whack on the ankle, but again, I think it was an impact more than anything else. So, touch wood, we'll we'll assess it tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure he'll be okay for Tuesday evening. Uh, Big John went off again. I don't know if it was a recurrence of his his old injury or. John started the game to obviously do more warm up, and with him being out for such a long time, we felt it was important that he did the warm up and, and went straight into the game after being warm rather than coming off the bench and risking it then. And um, he, he just didn't get through it, didn't get through it. But again, he's got a lot on his hands to try and fight for his place with Sean, who was absolutely whatever he does in, at the club on the pitch, off the pitch, he's been outstanding. He, he made one save after not having anything to do yesterday that was. Unbelievable to say the least, and it's it's great that we're now going to get Sean on a contract and going to get Sean with us for the foreseeable future. So again, it's another it's another competitive position. Obviously, John's got a fight on his hands, and Sean's got to maintain his his standards that he's, he's shown throughout. Cool. Okay, and uh, just looking ahead to um, well, the first competitive game back for some time uh, against uh, Colesville Town in the FA Trophy. Uh, second round. Um, what what do you know of Coles Hill and uh, what what kind of game are you expecting on Tuesday night? Not a hell of a lot because again, when the, when the draw got made, everything got shut down. So again, we've not had time, uh, probably as they haven't, to to come and watch us. Disappointed that we wanted to play the game yesterday because of the backlog of fixtures we've got and how an AstroTurf pitch can't be ready to play on a Saturday afternoon when you've not used it for four to five weeks is beyond me. Um, so they've obviously be all and end all, is it? They think that they're going to get a, an inferior team come Tuesday evening travelling down and not putting the work rate in. And obviously they don't know what we're like and they don't know the spirit amongst the lads. Be all and end all, like we've said all the way along, is they sort of rubbed us up the wrong way, making us come around on a Tuesday because I'm pretty sure they'd quite willing to, to get people in there if they could have done and the pitch out, it can't be ready for when it's an AstroTurf match, it was an absolute disgrace and to play there on a Saturday is, would have been ideal for, for both parties and I just I just feel that, again, we could have played a league game yesterday if if, if that would have been the case, if, if the FA had let us rather than playing a friendly, but listen, we'll treat them with respect, they deserve We'll go down there. We've, we've done our own work the best we can. Um, it's, it's an hard one, though. It's an hard one because we've got, we're going there. People that expect us to win. Um, but we've, we've been to Quan. We did it against OB. Uh, we did it against other teams. But we're on a hiding to nothing where people say, you go down there, a couple of these below you should expect to beat them. But we've seen in the FA Cup the other day, we've seen in different other competitions. It's, it's nothing to do with league position. It's application and the togetherness on the night. So, we'll, we'll up to... Uh, we've dangled the carrot for the lads because there's not going to be any competitive football unless we stay in this competition. So, I don't have to say anything Tuesday night. The lads know that we get knocked out and probably won't play till January and that'll hurt them more than anything, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, that, that sort of touches on my last question. Um, obviously, with them... Um... <laughs> It's still not 100% clear as to, you know, whether you might be able to play uh, some more league games. Is, any, is anything clear, Matthew? Is anything clear? <laughs> we, we, we've had more statements than anything else, haven't we? Which is disappointing. I'm not blaming our league. At the end of the day, the FA are quick enough to reprimand people. The FA should be giving it clear and obvious details of how we get back to football and how we... Listen, like we just spoke before, I was in Tesco yesterday and I've seen Oxford Street in, in London yesterday when shopping, thousands of thousands of people, hundreds of people in Tesco running around trying to get the shopping. They can't have one rule for one and one for another. We we are we we are 
so easy to police, as we've proved in the past, that we have got so many COVID initiatives in place that we can get a football game on, housing 600 people, as many other teams can in this league. So, again, I might be banging the same drum, but I think it's just absolutely ridiculous how we've not been guided by the powers that be. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just lastly, because obviously with uh, well, we've got a review date on the 16th of December. That's when the government has a look at their regional tiers and see if they make any changes. So obviously, we'll have to wait and see what happens there and we'll see what the MPL decides to do after that. But there is every chance that your only games remaining for this calendar year will be in the FA Trophy. So just how important is it to keep this FA Trophy run going with the knowledge that these might be your only competitive games still for maybe two to three, four weeks, maybe? Massively, like I just said, it's, it, it, the, the lads are hungry to play competitive football. and <laughs> I'm hoping that we can stay in it because I think it could be a massive part of the building process for the league campaign as well, if you can you can keep and sustain competitive football and then all the teams have got to come back after realistic they're going to be the 26 before we do get any fixtures if it's that if it's at that point it could be January so if we can keep competitive football going and we hit the ground running when the league starts because we've had that competitive edge I think that gives you a massive advantage in in any league campaign so it's 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 pivotal that we win this game on Tuesday evening for the lads and for the football club and for our hopes this season and trying to get in them playoffs or even push on and try and win the league and I think it's uh, all the teams will probably say the same Buxton's Matlocks but I think it's 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 big big game probably the biggest game of the season for me come Tuesday evening Cool excellent stuff Philo uh, nice to hear from you again and uh, I'll see you uh, on Tuesday night in Coleshill Cheers mate look after yourself and safe journey Yeah you too mate <laughs>